Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. As you can see the weather outside is very British at the moment. Um, so what do you do when um, you get to times like these, you can't get out and take photos? Um, well I turn my mind to, uh, to planning uh, and just thinking about the next photo trip uh, that I'm going to make. And what I'm going to do in this video is share um, my tips and tricks and, and the apps that I use to get the best out of landscape. Uh, low light and astrophotography. Is planning um, worthwhile? Absolutely. Um, it takes the guesswork out, takes out those variables, but it just means that you're in a position to be maybe that little bit luckier. Okay, let me talk to you about the workflow I've got for uh, planning an, an astrophotography trip uh, where I want to incorporate the landscape. Uh, now I use, uh, in the main, four um, uh, computer apps. Uh, the first one is Stellarium. Uh, which is um, uh, an astronomy app that uh, gives you a view of the constellations, the moon, the planets and a lot of other stuff that, that's in the night sky. Uh, the second one is Photopills um, and what Photopills does is it enables you to plan um, with uh, certainly the, the sun, the moon and uh, the, the Milky Way in mind uh, and for wide field um, landscape astrophotography it's an absolutely critical tool. Uh, the third one is actually Google Earth. Uh, and Google Earth is, is useful because it helps you plan the logistics of, uh, of your trip uh, and helps you um, sort of iron out some of the, uh, the variables that you, you may face um, or at least try to anticipate them because uh, some locations you, might, you may never have been to before and just finding somewhere to park your car and set up um, is something that you can uh, sort out be before you actually set off. Uh, the final app. Uh, is um, an app called Clear Outside. Now Clear Outside is, um, is a weather app but it's geared towards astronomers. Um, it gives a, a really good accurate view of cloud and cloud level. Um, there is um, uh, uh, ISS passes on there, other weather features things like fog, um, frost, um, all those predictions that are really useful uh, for anybody that wants to incorporate um, maybe a weather feature into into their their uh, low light and um, uh, landscape astrophotography. Okay, so let me give you a couple of examples of when I've used this workflow and it's you know it's delivered results. The first one I'll talk about a trip I took last year in, in between lockdown one and two. Um, I, I had a holiday in Cornwall, uh, and the planning for that holiday. It, included right at the outset, and this does drive my wife absolutely bonkers, um, a view of where the moon's going to be for the week that we actually book. Now, I, I've always had in mind that I wanted to get a shot of the Milky Way behind uh, St Michael's Mount, and September, generally the Milky Way um, is you know presented in a vertical position in the sky. I also wanted to see if I could get um, uh, the first bit of the, the crescent moon that will be setting over Mounts Bay. Um, now, luckily, the timings for those two things, they actually work. If you stand there long enough, um, you know, the moon will set, it will get out of the way of the Milky Way, and you'll get a, a reasonably clear sky to get, um, you know, that classic shot. Um, so the three images that um, I'm showing on screen now uh, were the result of the only clear night that we had in the seven days that we, we were down in Cornwall. Um, but it was actually um, the thought and the planning uh, that went into it beforehand that made that one opportunity work for me, uh, and I was really chuffed to you know to get those three those three pictures in one session. It doesn't always work like that, um, but that's what planning does for you. It just takes out some of those variables. The second um, set of images I'm going to show you um, come from um, the one clear. Uh, or clearish day that we had when we had a supermoon. Uh, we had a string of supermoons in 2019. I think all bar one for me was clouded out completely. Uh, the one um, I'm showing you now is actually the wolf moon, the January full moon of 2019. And that, um, that image um, was taken um, straight after work. I packed my, my stuff up and went into the uh, in, into the heights of, uh, of Chesterfield to get an elevated view of the eastern sky, uh, with a you know with a plan in my mind that I wanted to, to have a big supermoon uh, rising uh, just uh, just above the horizon. When I got to my location, having done all that work, it just clouded over, and I sat in that li lay by thinking, uh, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to en end up going home um, empty-handed. Uh, but as luck would have it, um, the clouds parted, and I was able to get. 
um, that classic shot of uh, a huge supermoon, um, right, uh, you know, over the, uh, the the target that I was after. On the same evening, by the time I'd driven uh, back home, um, there was actually um, uh, a penumbral um, lunar eclipse, which is a, a slight shading of the uh, the moon's surface caused by the Earth's shadow. Uh, my hopes weren't high, sort of driving home because the cloud was still around. But when I got home. I was able to unpack my gear and I got a five minute window just to get that shot. Okay, so let's move the sky around and see what we can see. Uh, well, at the moment, um, what we have got, because uh, we're just past full moon, uh, is probably a 93, 94% waning gibbous moon um, that will rise about, about six in the evening. Um, now that'd be okay if I was just working out of the shed and I've you know, got my big scope on I could maybe get a, a close-up view of that but what I'm really interested in is seeing um, what time it's going to set um, because uh, the setting time um, and the position it's likely to set in uh, will put it pretty close to uh, a local landmark for where I live uh, which is um, All Saints Church at Sawley um, so let me just move the sky around and um, see what will happen um, if I just scroll forward in time. Um, that will give me a, a, a clue as to how high the, the, the moon is going to be relative to, uh, to, the, to the false horizon on here um, and what time I need to set off and be in position. So let's try and scroll that forward. There you go, here comes the moon. And as you can see, the moon is going to set around about half past eight, nine o'clock time, or it's going to be close enough to the uh, to the horizon um, to give me um, a good working shot with uh, the church spire for um, All Saints Church. How much time have I actually got to play with uh, with regards to the position of the moon? And this is all assuming that um, that the weather's going to cooperate. By the way. Well, on the face of it, it looks like I've got about half an hour. Uh, I've never been this lucky in terms of having a clear sky right to that level of the horizon. Um, but the moon at a certain height, given the you know the relative height of the the church spire, uh, gives me a lovely shot, and that's what I'm aiming for. Okay, let's jump straight into the app. Uh, so this is photo pills. Uh, I've gone straight onto the planner tile uh, and what I've done is I've set the time and the date um, uh, for when um, the moon is going to be in the position that I want to take uh, the photo that I'm after. So um, I'm on the 30th today, uh, tomorrow's the 31st um, and I'm just going to position on screen whereabouts the moon's going to be relative to the pin that I've stuck in the map. If you recall from um, what we saw um, earlier in um, Stellarium, you've got a window of roughly 20-30 minutes, uh, around about 8.15, 8.40, something like that, uh, when um, the moon's going to be low enough to the horizon. I've got All Saints Church lined up, but the moon um, would not be uh, directly behind or close to the spire. So actually what I've got to think about is just shifting my position and the way you can do that is just pick the pin up, drop it somewhere else. That's where I need to stand. If I'm after that photo, I need to be stood in that position. It's in the golden hour, that's what I want. I want the, uh, the colour in the sky if there's, if there's any available and I want the moon close or, or very close to setting behind uh, the church spire. Um, so there's my plan. Okay, let's jump into the final app. Uh, there's a graphical representation first and foremost of, of the time of day across the top and then the sunlight going into golden hour, blue hour and then into um, uh, into twilight and in, into darkness. Um, there's a line on there to show whereabouts the moon's gonna, first going to pop its, um, its head up and also uh, the point at which it actually sets. Now that's useful for us again uh, using the the other three apps at this point uh, to get that um, am I going to get a good shot tomorrow um, well um, 
it doesn't look favourable, I have to say, because at 8 o'clock, uh, when I need to be in the right position, all of a sudden I've got cloud. But it might not be a dead loss, actually, because that cloud looks like it's going to be high cloud. And depending on how thin that high cloud is, um, there may be an opportunity between six and uh, between six and eight o'clock to get the moon very close to the um, uh, to the um, the landscape that I'm trying to shoot. Would I go for it? Well, sometimes you just have to take a punt because these things aren't deadly accurate, but it gives me an indication that it might be worthwhile at least sort of poking my head above the duvet on. Um, uh, tomorrow morning at six o'clock and just checking the sky nothing better than confirming a, a, a weather forecast and sticking your head out the window i suppose okay let's see what we can see this morning that high clouds come in as predicted by the weather app and you know we don't get the moon which is currently shrouded out could get a great sunrise. There's always a compensation with this sort of stuff. And you can't wish for better mornings than that. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. There you go. Sometimes you do get a compensation. You might not be getting the shot that you're after, but uh, nature just finds another way of uh, cheering you up. Okay, so the moon's up there somewhere, and that would have been the shot I'd have been after. Okay, that's what I've been talking about. Being able to get through a clump of trees, um, the moon would have been setting just behind. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can plan some things, you can plan other things. Sometimes it don't work out, but it's still good fun, uh, given we're in lockdown. Like I say, I'd sooner be out doing something, at least in the local neighbourhood, than doing absolutely nothing whatsoever. So I'll, uh, I'll call it quits at that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the, uh, the next video. Bye for now.